Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're listening. This is Davisville on KDRTLP 95.7 FM in Davis, California. We live at KDRT.org online. I am Bill Buchanan, and I thank you for tuning in for the latest of our programs about different aspects of how the pandemic is affecting Davis. Uh, and I should say today's program, like others I've done this spring, sounds different because I'm recording it through my computer instead of in our station's wonderful studio. My guest today is Steve Boschkin. He is a Davis mortgage and real estate broker who has a degree in environmental design and urban planning from UC Davis. He's been on this show uh, several times in the 12 years we've been doing it uh, to talk about housing. And that's the subject today, the effect of the pandemic on housing in Davis, at least so far. And Steve is talking to us from his home office, also over computer. So Steve, thank you for coming on to Davisville today. Absolutely. So, uh, most of the town's been sheltering in place for more than two months now. We're, we're talking in late May. Uh, the schools are closed. UC Davis classes are remote. Most college students have left town. The economy's taken a hit. Um, lots of unknowns still, but uh, given all this, what's the state of the housing market in Davis this spring? And I'm interested in rent as well as sales, whatever you can tell us. Sure. Um, so fortunately, I guess on our end, uh, we were considered essential and have gone to the office every day and continued to work and um, but watching the the transformation over the last few months has been very interesting um, and it changes day by day um, the university uh, well let me, let me go back to uh, you know let's say January um, it was a much different place uh, in our world in January um, we were chugging along. Um, the market was looking like it was uh, going to be just a, a, a normal year um, with, you know, a couple percent uh, appreciation and normal sales. Um, the university is uh, still building uh, at a furious pace um, the 5,000 new beds out on West Campus that they have been um, working on for a number of years um, and so we were from a rental standpoint um, there's also an, sorry there's another uh, um, several projects over the you know spattered throughout Davis that are underway um, a large one by the post office one by um, Wake Forest uh, another one on Olive Drive all of which we're going to be adding over the next year um, about 7,500 beds, I would guess, to the Davis rental market. So that was already something that we were kind of anticipating. Um, what we didn't anticipate, obviously, was the C-19 uh, effects and uh, on the university and how they were going to um, handle being in session on campus versus the electronic um, education that a lot of the kids are getting right now. With the um, shutdown, uh, most of the students that uh, were here um, are, are locked into leases uh, for probably the better part of the summer. Uh, you know, most of the leases in Davis are uh, one-year leases and they tend to start typically either at the end of, uh, or beginning of uh, July or beginning of August, depending on the cycle. And they are, uh, and they're locked into those. What has transpired is that the county and the state have put in a moratorium that landlords uh, cannot foreclose or, um, uh, sorry, not foreclose, but evict uh, the tenants. However, uh, once the, the ban is lifted, um, the stay at home, um, shelter in place uh, requirement is lifted, then the uh, renters have up to six months to pay back any back rent. Now that'll be very interesting to see how uh, landlords are going to collect on that because the longer it goes, the larger that dollar amount goes uh, or gets to. And the reality is if they're not working and they can't pay their rent, how are they going to pay their rent you know, uh, back six months? Uh, or more, but well, and, uh, in fact, that, that's one of the things I've wondered about is is uh, as far as you can tell, are rents still being paid? 
You know, surprisingly, so we manage between HOAs and rental properties, roughly 2,000 uh, single family or, or residential properties. And we're finding that well, on the HOA side, most everybody is able to make their payment um, for those. On the rental side, we're finding that surprisingly um, a high number, and I don't have exact statistics on this, but I would say in the in the at least 95% range, people are making their payments. Um, you know, the first month, most people have some reserves. Uh, the second month, that gets a little tighter, but then the PPP programs and the unemployment programs started to kick in in April, and people were starting to get checks. So we're finding that there's there are very few at this point, at least in Davis. I can't say what's happening outside of Davis, but at least in Davis, the majority of people are making their payments. Are, are people signing leases for the fall? Because, you know, yep. Davis, the market is tight. Uh, I guess anybody listening probably knows that. But generally, you know, you, you, you can't get an apartment just any time. You have to kind of get it at the right time of the cycle, which means students are having to decide now. And it's not clear what the UC is going to do in terms of, they're going to have hybrid, they're going to have some online, some in person, I guess. Right. As we understand it, the university, uh, and we've talked to several people that are, you know, close to the hierarchy at UCD, and they're going to do the, they've announced already that they're going to do the higher, the hybrid kind of system. However, it's our probably inside uh, understanding that that hybrid is primarily going to be online and only the science and laboratory type classes uh, are going to be on campus. Well, that's going to change things significantly, at least for the undergrads. So back to your question, uh, or how's rental or how's leasing going? And as you may or may not be aware, this is the, the time when all the leases get renewed uh, starting in January, February, March for the following year. What we're finding is that grad students, law students, med students, vets, uh, those uh, students are all signing their leases now because they expect to be on campus. Uh, no matter what, how campus opens for undergrads, it is expected that those students will be on campus. What we are finding though on undergrads is that they are not being informed as to how their specific classes are going to go and whether they need to be here. And they are very hesitant to sign leases. Now, if the university all of a sudden says, well, we're going to have, you know, 50% of your classes are going to be on campus, then we're going to see a mad rush of all these students who have kind of hesitated to get into their rentals for next year and try to, you know, kind of lock something down because at this point they don't have anything. And the university has talked about even not doing guaranteed freshman housing come the fall because in the past they have they have um, stuck you know three or four people into one dorm room well right now at least with the the c19 guidelines that the county is is um, recommending and the state's recommending putting those that many people into one room who then go out into the community and then come back and be with each other is just not a good recipe for staying healthy and so they're talking about potentially taking all of those dorms and on-campus housing down to one person per bedroom. And I think that I heard that UCLA has already done that. Okay, so this really, um, there's just a lot of uncertainty what I'm hearing with all this, right? I mean, you've got, at the start of it, you were saying there's more supply that was coming on at the start of the year. And so that would have increased capacity. It sounds like uh, some students are fairly certain they're gonna, they're gonna sign a lease out of the campuses but there's a lot of others who are waiting. Is this having any effect on rents themselves? Well, we're at the very, very early stage of trying to figure out uh, what is you know, anticipated for next year because that changes daily. We're seeing some landlords who are very um, nervous about where the market is start to dump some of their prices uh, for leasing down, not significantly, but enough to try to get under the market and, and attract people. 
you have you know others that are just holding tight and are waiting to see what's going to happen because they don't want to sign leases that are you know below this year's numbers uh, if they can afford not to or or to wait so it's we're not seeing a big dump yet but you know those that are on the bit of nervous side are uh, are definitely you know looking at ways that they can try to fill their unit and leave somebody else's vacant you know a uh, minute ago uh, by the way there were a couple of things you had said i wanted just to uh make sure i understood you talked about managing a, a couple thousand units are these ones that you and, and your because you actually have several companies right uh, yeah we have we have uh, a number of companies so we manage you know a dozen or so hoas we manage single family up through uh 15 units we don't do any apartment complexes that's a you know different bird but all those combined were in the couple thousand um unit range and it gives us a bigger perspective on on life um you know as far as all things davis real estate i guess and then the, the term hoa what is what does that mean uh homeowner association so okay uh so we manage like stonegate uh, we manage uh el Macero, uh, parts of el Macero. um anything that has a an a, a association um there's probably 20 or 30 in davis and we have the majority of them in davis that um are large and those are the those are the properties where the HOA takes care of a lot of the maintenance of the property. The owners pay dues and, you know, it's, they, they take care of their own house, but, you know, the HOA takes care of, you know, in some cases, all the exterior maintenance or, um, or the landscaping or the insurance or, you know, that kind of okay. stuff. Stuff like that. So, so uh, you, you went to school at UC Davis and I'm trying to recall you, before college, you were living in Davis as well, right? I think I went to Pioneer Elementary School and then uh, Holmes Junior High and Davis High School and then UC Davis and then they, I did my uh, MBA at University of Maryland. So, so. Okay. <laughs> the point is, you've you've lived in Davis a long time. You know Davis really well, and obviously you're quite active in it. The conditions that we have now, have you ever seen anything like them? No, uh, even the even the Great Recession of two thousand, you know, eight to twelve was nothing like this. You know, the last couple of recessions, and I actually love to study recessions, surprisingly, but the last few recessions have all been banking related. Um, the FSLIC debacle, the um, the last one was, uh, you know, banking related, investment related. This, you know, for the for those that don't remember, the 2008 to 2012 recession was often, you know, highly caused by banks that, if you could fog a mirror, uh, proving you were alive, they'd give you a loan. It doesn't matter what your income was or you know anything like that. And so people were going out and buying property because appreciation levels at that time were huge. They were in some cases between 2001 and 2005 we were appreciating between 20 and 25% per year. So people thought, oh, I don't need to put anybody in the unit. I just need to own the unit and I'll sell it a couple of years from now, make 50% on money that I borrowed, you know, 95% on the property. Well, that worked for a few years, but when the Piper came calling, uh, all of a sudden you had this mass number of vacant homes that the banks ended up taking back. You know, it took years for those banks to get through all that. That's not the situation we have here. Our vacancy rate in Davis is, you know, less than 1%. Um, at mm -hmm. least it was before we started the C-19. And the, the regulatory uh, industry um, is so tight right now, and has been for the last few years, that they really, you know, the, the loans that are out there right now are really good loans. And unless some catastrophe happens with that individual, you know, they're, they're going to be just fine on the lending side. We own a mortgage company and interest rates right now have dropped. I just looked this morning. I mean, you know, close to 3% on a 30 year fixed or two and a quarter percent on a 15 year fix are incredible rates. But one thing we have found that is going to affect the upper end market just, you know, a little bit until they reopen it up. But, 
a jumbo loan or a conventional loan is anything up to about 576. And everything above that is considered a jumbo loan. And that's $576,000. These are mortgage loans you're talking correct, about? Correct. Yeah. And what's happened is the, the, the market in Wall Street has decided that they don't want to buy those jumbo loans anymore. So the lenders that, you know, the, the loans that we used to be able to get people in the jumbo category have all but disappeared for now. I mean, there's a few out there, but, you know, for the most part, they're gone. You can't hardly get a loan above 576 right now. But the lower, uh, lower than that, if people, you know, those that are in place right now and have owned their home, you know, quite a while, most of those people have loans that are under, you know, $575,000. Okay. And we're so, seeing a huge number of refinances, which is helping people's cash flow as well. Okay. I was going to say the interest rates are a number here too. And of course, these are huge loans we're talking about, convent, you know, in a normal sense, but Davis is that kind of a market. I should do a quick ID. We are talking with Steve Boschkin, who uh, real estate mortgage, a uh, real estate broker, mortgage broker, uh, manages properties. Uh, grew up in Davis as well. Uh, this is uh, Davisville on KDRT, and I'm Bill Buchanan. So we've got probably about about 12 minutes left. I do want to talk about the uh, housing prices in Davis as well. Um, what are they doing right now? That's a great question because you would think that with everybody sheltering in place that we would be tanking right now. And over the last couple of months, things have slowed down a bit on the number of sales. But surprisingly, since the first of the year, we've closed 105 homes uh, in Davis. Okay. Um, and, you know, that is right near where we were a year ago without C-19 involved. Prices uh, themselves are pr within one tenth of one percent of where they were a year ago. We're not seeing a huge amount of depreciation yet. Um, I say yet because who knows where all this is going to go. You know, th we've been waiting for the next recession. So, you know, trying to figure out where that is, I think we found it. <laughs> well, you know, that it's kind of remarkable. I mean, uh, do you think housing prices are? Is the economist say a lagging indicator? Because I mean, unemployment is some people say 20, 25 percent. UC has announced a pay freeze. It seems surprising that prices in Davis would would not have dropped. Well, and you got to realize that this time of year is pretty much our peak of the year. Um, you know, from about March till the till July uh, is our you know top time of the year. Uh, during the you know sequester time, there weren't a lot of homes being sold. I mean, we've sold some. Uh, you know, some numbers are, are. We had a lot in January sell, uh, and even in February. So that's part of that number. But surprisingly, now that the governor and the county have released, you know, a few more uh, parts of the of our society to be able to open back up, we're all of a sudden starting to see more homes come on the market and we're also seeing more buyers come out of the house to look where that will take us through this year is still yet to be known i would say that our so for the past um two months the number of home sales are down 31 percent so there is a drop in the number of sales but the prices don't seem to be following yet that trend now, you say, you know, you uh, mentioned the, the amount of unemployed. Davis is a bit of a unique, uh, you know, island in the sense that much of our uh, community, not excluding the students, obviously, but much of our community are state, federal, or high-income earners who have a do a pretty good job of having a lot of savings. Even during the the 2008 to 2012 recession, Davis dropped a total of 20 to 25 percent from their highs of 2005. And those are prices or sales or, or uh, no prices? Okay, sorry. Um, where you go over to Natomas, uh, parts of Sacramento, some of those dropped over 80 percent uh, on their prices. Sales prices in Davis so far have held okay. There's negotiating going on between buyer and sellers. Buyers are in some cases a little bit on the nervous side, but you know I would expect a our our normal 
list price to sales price, it's usually within two or three percent. Okay. So, you know, when we list a home, we expect to get somewhere between two and three uh, percent within that price as the sales. A lot of times this time of year, we're getting multiple offers. We're not getting that many right now um, to drive the prices up. So you're seeing an effect, um, but, uh, and, and I heard you a minute ago, you say, you know, where this is all headed. I, I was tempted to ask you where you think it's headed, but I guess really, <laughs> who knows, right? Yeah, unfortunately, I dropped my crystal ball. But <laughs> um, from a conservative well, standpoint, uh, you know, I would, um, I would think that while we work our way through how we're going to pay back and re-employ all of the money that, uh, well, re-employ the people and pay back all of the trillions of dollars that the federal government has been dishing out, that's going to have a, a bit of an effect on, on purchasing. But oftentimes when we go through major events in life, the real estate market in the next year or two starts to really take off. It, it's just this kind of weird trend. And, and if you look at, you know, past recessions, the same kind of thing happens. After the, we hit the bottom, you know, people are nervous to get back in, but those that have, you know, the get back in often make a lot of money in, in you know, owning the, the properties that they own because the inflation level um, that starts to happen is greater a lot greater than you know than the average time uh inflation is so so uh, a couple of the questions i wanted to ask one was and this draws on everything your uc davis experience degree living here what should we take out of this experience do you think i mean is the davis housing market going to permanently change from what we're going through oh and and if it is why and if it isn't why very broad question well and, and I can appreciate the broadness of that question. And I think the reality is, if you're only looking at a point in time in the next year, you know, I'd be nervous about going in, going into the market, you know, full, full bore. It, but the reality is in real estate, you can't just look at the next year. You have to look at the next five years, the next 10 years. And the majority of people in Davis that are buying and selling are not buying and selling to buy rentals. They're buying their own personal property. So if you were to sell today and, um, and go out and buy another house, even if it drops a little bit over the next couple of years, it will come back. You know, we're, we're, um, there's a subdivision out in uh, Northwest Davis called Bretton Woods that is our latest um, subdivision. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are ready to jump into that. And I think what they've figured out is that, you know, they sell the, the, their existing home that they've lived in for many years and they buy their new home uh, out there and they're not going to move again for a number of years. And in many cases, that will be their last home. But I'm not afraid to be a buyer in this market. Um, in fact, I, you know, I like to look for deals in this market. Um, I was, I was going to say a minute ago when you said that the prices will come back, I thought that's a, that's a pretty confident statement to make right now. Um, well, have you ever seen them permanently ever stay down? <laughs> well, in other, in other markets I have, and, and I don't know Davis history like, like you do, uh, but, but I would imagine if the economy got bad enough or things got uncertain enough, well, even, even during the peak of the recession, uh, you know, Detroit had dumped, you know, their prices. They were probably the worst in the country. They had uh, a significant number of homes that were down in the six to $10,000 range. You could buy a home for that cheap. There were just so many vacant homes there that nobody wanted them. Well, their market, those same homes today are in the $120,000, $130,000 range. And it's, you know, in real estate, time kind of cures everything as long as you don't go pulling a whole bunch of money out and put yourself in a bad debt position i think mm -hmm. ultimately everything will come back and it may not be immediate i mean that it, it may we may very well lay flat for the next five years uh, so, or even take a little hit well and in fact another question i wanted to ask was uh what key factors or indicators in the next month or two uh do you think will tell us how things are headed in davis 
I mean, should we be looking at unemployment rates or what? Um, I, well, I don't think anything that is going to happen in the next couple of months is going to indicate where we're going to be two to five years from now. Um, you okay. know, I, I just unfortunately, I, you know, there's, there's uh, everything that's going to come out in the next couple of months, it, you know, obviously is going to change by the day anyway, but is only going to affect probably the next year or two anyway. I mean, uh, well, I guess then, then what indicators would, if you saw it, what indicators would tell you, hey, we're, we're coming out or maybe we're getting worse? Yeah, the, the last week or so, and of course that's a very short period of time, but the last week or so, it may be the weather, it may be that people have been sequestered too long and you know, their, their psyche has been you know, kind of beaten down while they were not able to go out, but there's a lot of exuberance right now that they are able to get out in the sun um, although I hear this weekend supposed to be a hundred and something degrees, but yeah. they want to get out. They want to be out and be part of society again. And I think that that will give the overall market um, a little bit of um, positive light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, it's not going to be the cure for everything, but it's on the path to the cure. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I guess it'll depend, too, on, on how the pandemic goes, obviously, whether right. we tame it or not. Well, Steve, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Yeah, we bet. Thank you. We've been talking with Steve Boshkin, uh, Real Estate in Davis, and this is Davisville, and thank you for listening. <laughs>